Welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 88 of ASP.NET video series. In part 87 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of Windows authentication. If you haven't watched part 87, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In this part of the video series, we will continue to discuss about Windows authentication. First, let's quickly recap what we have discussed in part 87. I have an ASP.NET web application project here. On this web form, I have a grid view control and a button control. In the page load event of this web form, this line prints the name of the account that is used to execute the application code. And this line prints the message whether the user is authenticated or not. And this line prints the authentication type that is used if the user is authenticated. And this line prints the name of the authenticated user. And then when the user clicks the button, we are creating an instance of the data set object. The data set object then reads the XML data from C colon backslash data folder. And then we are setting the data source uh, data set as the data source for the grid view control, finally invoking the data bind method. This application is actually deployed to IIS. Within IIS, I have this web application one. And if you look at the authentication of this web application one, we have anonymous authentication and Windows authentication enabled at IIS level. But then within the web.config file of the application, we are actually denying access to anonymous users. And how are we doing that? By using question mark within the authorization list. So when, when question mark is used within the authorization list, it has got a special meaning. It indicates anonymous users. So we are basically saying deny access to anonymous users, unauthenticated users. Along with question mark, there's another symbol, asterisk, which has got special meaning when used in the authorization element of the web.config file. Asterisk symbol indicates all users. In this session, we will see how to allow or deny access to specific users. Now look at this. When I run this application as it stands, you know, all the authenticated users will be able to access the application. Okay, so I am an user on this computer, so I am able to access this application. Okay, now click on the start button, right click on computer and select manage. So this should bring up computer management window. And then if you go to local users and groups, and if you select users, and on this computer, I have all these users. Okay, Prajim, Prasad, Venkat, and the others. Okay, now I, you know, any of these users can actually access this app application because all of them have Windows accounts, so they will be able to access. Now, let us say I want to allow only Prasad and Prajim access to the web application. I want to deny access to Venkat. How do I do that? you know, using the allow users element. So allow users, here, if you look at that, we are allowing access only to Venkat and Prajim, and we are denying access to everybody else. And how are we specifying that? Using the asterisk symbol. Let's see how to do that. Okay, so let's go to web.config file. So I want to deny access to everybody else, but I want to allow access to users, okay, Prasad hyphen PC. So that's the name of this computer. Okay, now in reality, in, in a corporate organization where we have local intranets, we have a domain network. And then the users are part of those domain network. And every user will have a username to log into their computer. Now, based on their usernames and the groups that they belong to, these users can retrieve some resources and, and only access a few of the organization resources based on their level and the role they belong to. Now, let's say if we want the same security scheme to be applied even to our web application, then we can use Windows authentication with impersonation. So in that case, you will actually use the name of the domain instead of the name of your machine. Because since I don't have a network here, since I'm just using this machine to demonstrate Windows authentication, I'm using the users and groups that are present on my computer. But in, in, in a corporate organization scenario, we have a domain, so we might use a domain name there. Okay, so on this machine, I want to deny access, I mean, I want to allow access to Prajim and Prasad. So Prasad hyphen PC, Prajim, and Prasad hyphen PC, Prasad. So we want to allow access to these 
two users that are present on this machine. So now I am logged in as Prasad into this computer. So obviously if I go ahead and run this application as you might expect I will be able to access the application because in the list you have allowed Prasad to access the application. On the other hand let's say we want to deny access to Prasad. Look at that. I want to allow access only to Prajim and Venkat but I am logged into this computer as Prasad. Now let's save this and try to access this file and see what's going to happen. So I press enter. Look at that. The moment I press enter it's showing this authentication required window. So it's asking username and password. Now I will have to supply one of these usernames and passwords, Venkats or Prajims. Otherwise, I will not be able to access the application. Look at this. If I click cancel, I get an error message saying access is denied. I don't have access to the required, to the requested resource. Okay. But on the other hand, let's go ahead and press enter again here. If I enter Venkats username and password and click login, look at that. I am authenticated as Venkat. So we have just seen how to allow access to specific users and deny to the rest of them. Okay. Now it's also possible to control access based on the rules. Now if you look at this computer management here, not only users, these users can be present in groups. Now there are several built-in windows groups like administrators, guests, users, etc. And each group is a collection of users. Now if you look at users here, Prasad is a member of administrators group and Venkat is a member of just users group. He is not a member of an administrators group. And similarly Prajim is just a member of guests and users group. Now let's say I want to deny access to to everybody else except people who belong to guest group then how can I do that? I can use roles. Okay, so here if you look at this, you are allowing people who belong to administrators. Okay, let's say if there are 5,000 administrators in my organization, instead of using a comma separated list of 5,000 administrators, I can just specify the role name, allow roles is equal to administrators, and deny access to everybody else. Now let's quickly look at this in action. Let's say I want to allow, you know, roles only guests. Okay and deny access to everybody else. So this should be roles. Okay, deny access to everybody else. Now on this computer I'm logged in as Prasad and if you remember Prasad belong to only administrators group, administrators and home users. I am not part of guest group. So obviously now if I try to access this app web form obviously it will show up that authentication required prompt. So I need to log in as a person who belong to guest group. And if you look at this, Prajim belong to guest groups. So we have to provide the credentials of Prajim. So Prajim and the password of that. So click login. So look at that. I am authenticated as Prajim. Okay, so we have seen how to grant or, grant or deny access to specific users. We also have seen how to grant or deny access to specific roles. It is also possible to programmatically check if the user belongs to a specific role. So how do we do that? If user dot is in role administrators, then you know do whatever an admin can. Otherwise, do non-admin stuff. Let's quickly check this in action. So for example, if you look at this one you're only allowed access as a guest. Now let's say if user dot is in role administrators so if the user is part of an administrators group then you know read that XML file and retrieve the data else Maybe I just want to print a message onto the screen response dot write. You are not an admin. Okay. Actually, within the web.config file, let's allow all authenticated users. So now I am logged in as an administrator. 
so I'm logged in as Prasad who belongs to administrators group so if I click that button so you know I'm authenticated as Prasad since I belong to administrators group I am able to access that but on the other hand let's deny access to administrators groups and only allow guests then I access to everybody else but now since I am logged in as Prasad who belongs to administrators group it's going to show up that prompt so if I provide a guest name probably Prajim is guest so if I log in but Prajim doesn't belong to administrators group so if I click this button look at that you get that message you are not an admin okay so programmatically we can check if user dot is we can use is enroll method and then to that method specify the name of the group you know which you want to check on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day